Okay, great. So hello everyone and welcome to the Cheryl Theory webinar plus Zoom party. This is our first live public event ever. So I'm really excited that you are here and thank you, thank you, thank you so much for signing up and for catching this live or on the replay. So if we haven't met yet, my name is Cheryl Lau and I am a side hustle coach and I currently run a six figure coaching business while doing a PhD. And I help you build a coaching business that makes five to 10 K months in a way that does not feel like a second full-time job, even if you are a side hustler. And this really matters to me because I want all of us here to be able to create not just a bigger income and impact, but also more options in life. And I am also the host of the Side Hustle Club podcast. And if you follow me on Instagram stories, you're going to see a lot of cats, K-pop, and bubble tea. And on this live event or on the replay, you're going to gain new perspectives on your business and how you might want to run it and scale to the next level. You're also going to get actionable tips, both strategy and mindset wise. And you're going and you you will learn how I can help you create a coaching business that makes five to ten k months, even on top of a nine to five or whatever else you have got going on in life. And we are going to have a good time. So here is the breakdown of today. Part one is we are going to take a look at the Cheryl theory framework, the strategy and mindset behind this framework. Number two is how to apply this to your business and. Then afterwards, I'll extend an invitation to those of you who may want to take it a step further and work with me um, in a closer capacity to really implement this framework into your own business and life. And then afterwards, we are going to have Q&A, live coaching, and good conversations. Um, some quick housekeeping items. If possible, please do have your camera turn on because this is a Zoom party after all. Um, but if it's not convenient, no worries. Um, and also at any point throughout the event, if you want to take a photo or boomerang and share on your Instagram stories, please feel free to do so. And please tag me at Cheryl Theory. And a replay will be available uh, as soon as possible um, for a limited time. And also, uh, I will not be looking at the chat box during the presentation or the training part of the event. So please um, uh, feel free to type in your questions in a chat box first. And our co-host of the event will track the questions and they'll uh, share it with me at the Q&A component, or just feel free to ask it during the Q&A. Awesome. Okay. And some expectations I just want to share here is that please do take responsibility for your own implementation of what we will discuss today, but also take what you like only and leave the rest because there might be strategies that I share that you may not really be feeling. So no worries, but just, you know, keep an open mind of what is possible and take what you like and leave the rest. And yeah, there is always another way of thinking about things in your business or doing things in your business. So let's have an open mind about all of this and take what you like and leave the rest. Great. Let's start with part one, the Cheryl theory framework, the strategy and mindset explained. So I wanted to start off this presentation by sharing my thoughts on why I think some coaches or entrepreneurs may not be at that arbitrary 5 to 10K month market or whatever income goal that you might have set. And when I really thought about it, I think what usually happens is when it comes to the strategy side of things, here's what I tend to notice is that there is just too much going on, too many strategies and too many action items and not really mastering a few key things that will work and also trying to copy other successful entrepreneurs instead of using your own brain to create your unique thought leadership. So that's what I tend to notice on the strategy side of things. In terms of the mindset, I tend to see not much self-coaching going on, maybe not getting coached by a coach who understands you and gets you, um, and just constantly being in like a spiral of self-doubt, stress, frustration, comparison, je comparison, jealousy, FOMO, feeling like you're not doing enough, feeling like you're not good enough, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then with these things combined together, what usually happens is that number one, you don't hit that five to 10K month mark, or you do hit it, but you're constantly on the brink of giving up and burning out. So that's why the Cheryl Theory Framework really wants to focus on three things. So number one, the thoughts and mindset multiplied by the strategy and structure and multiplied by just staying committed to these two things that we just mentioned. And my goal is really to help other coaches and entrepreneurs, especially for those of you who have other things going on in your life. And that could be a career, personal life things, whatever it is. And I really want to help you run a simple business that works so that you can actually like your business, enjoy your life, and genuinely be a happy person. Um, and here's my take on building a business. 
Because what's the point of making six figures in your business if you're unhappy with your, yourself and your life? What's the point of making six figures if you don't even like how you're running your business and you don't even like the strategies that you are implementing? What's the point of making six figures if you feel like you know you have to be someone else or portray yourself as someone else in an, in an authentic way, right? And my question to those things would be, would this even be a business that is worth building? So um, with that being said, why even build a coaching business in the first place? And for me, the reason that I have come up with for myself are the following. Um, it's how people, because if you are building a service-based or coaching-based business, more likely than not, you're doing this because you want to help people, right? Um, number two is to create more options, flexibility, and or freedom in your life and career uh, to use your existing skills, experiences, and knowledge to create an impact. Um, for some of you, maybe you feel like you know that you're meant to do bigger things in life than what you're currently doing. Um, you also want to create value and share your ideas through your content, even for free. And finally, perhaps you want to create a life, career, and or business that is aligned with who you are. So those are some reasons that I think a lot of us here might resonate with. So for the last point in particular, I, would, I just want to elaborate a little bit on that. So what I find is that when it comes to creating an aligned life, career, and business, there are three kind of like guiding principles that I've, I've found for me personally that have really helped me create this outcome for myself. So number one is standing firm and pursuing what you really, really believe in and always take responsibility for your decisions and actions. Number two, stay committed to your vision and goals, even if people may not agree or support you at this moment. And number three, creating this so-called aligned life, career, and business is really just a choice you have to make. There's no right or wrong choices. It's just a choice that you make and stay committed to it. So now let's start to segue into the Cheryl theory. So the Cheryl theory is basically the idea that you can create a successful coaching business and still excel in your career and make time for what matters most to you in life by doing the bare minimum in your business, but doing it really, really, really well. So that's the main premise of this, um, the Cheryl theory framework. Here is a fancy looking diagram that kind of covers the overview of it. We're going to dissect each of these components one by one by one in part two. Oh, and please don't let this fancy looking graph overwhelm you. So before we start dissecting each part, let me just share what I actually do in my business because I think that that, 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 that diagram just now might be a little bit overwhelming or even intimidating. So what I actually do on a weekly basis when I actually looked at my Google calendar and the time blocks on my calendar, here's what I find. So coaching my clients take about eight to 10 hours a week on average. Um, Instagram stories and carousel posts are another thing that I do very frequently. And I also publish a weekly episode on the Side Hustle Club podcast. So when I tallied the hours up, is usually around 14, max 16 hours a week spent business-related things. Um, and do keep in mind that the majority of my hours are spent for coaching my clients, i.e. not content creation or busy work. Things that I do occasionally do are creating bonus workshops for my clients. Um, so for example, throughout this quarter and next quarter of 20. 22, I'm posting monthly, monthly uh, workshops for my clients or creating new resources for a private client portal. I might guest on a podcast here and there. I might um, speak on a virtual summit here and there as well. And also this webinar, the Zoom party, this is something that I only occasionally do. So these are things that I don't do consistently on a month to month or week to week basis in my business. Okay. So some of you might be thinking, okay, Cheryl, I, I get the part about doing the lesser number of things, but how do I do it really, really, really well? Like, how do I know if it's working or if I'm doing the right thing? So that's why in this next section, I want to show you my approach to building a simple, effective, and enjoyable business that has helped myself uh, make six figures in my business, even as a side hustler, and still actually like my life and myself. Okay, great. Part two, applying this to your business. 
So the overarching kind of like categories in the Cheryl theory framework is number one, the thoughts and mindset. Number two, the strategy and the structure. Number three, actually implementing the thoughts and the strategy. So when it comes to your thoughts and mindset, I really am very adamant about working on your thoughts regularly so that you can actually operate from the energy or state of mind that is effective, efficient, and actually enjoyable for your business. Because remember, if you're building a personal brand-based kind of business, you are leading your audience by example. You are leading by example. So that's why it is super, super relevant and important to work on your mindset and identity and self-belief as an entrepreneur, coach, and just a person in general. And when it comes to the strategy slash structure, I, I would say that the issue isn't necessarily what specific strategy or systems that you are using or thinking about using because they all work, right? That's why so many different strategies and systems, et cetera, et cetera, they all exist, right? Because people are implementing them all and they all work. But what I just really want us to remember is to just pick a few key things that you want to do and stay committed to making it work, right? And then finally, stay focused on implementing your belief plan and your action plan and not give up on those things when there's supposedly no evidence to validate if it's working or not, right? Um, I also wanted to add this particular note here about hard work and um, hustle because I think that um, uh, a lot of people think that if you are a side hustler or you, if you have other things going on in life that you know you have to like hustle 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 in your business just to make it work um but i think there's a difference between hard work and hustle right i think the energy that you're operating from is a little bit different because here's the thing hard work is necessary for your business anything in life in general right but it's a little bit different from hustle which is like feeling like you have to do it like you have to do extra hours like work 24 7 to make it work whereas hard work is coming from an energy of you know what i'm proud of the work i put in so i just want to make a quick nuanced note there um but yeah we're not going to spend too much time on this okay so now let's refresh our memory once again and take a closer look at the Cheryl theory framework so there's nine main parts so the overarching pillars as you can see are the thoughts times the structure or strategy times doing the work and underneath each of these three big categories we have three more subcategories i really focus in on for myself and for my clients so the first thing is something that i like to call the two times two method which is really um the foundation to planning goal setting um, and making decisions in your business number two self-coaching and getting coached number three why are you doing this like what are your, your values? Are you operating from a place of service? What is your identity as a coach or entrepreneur? Are you committed to being an entrepreneur? So those things. Um, underneath the strategy and structure column, we have thought leadership, which we will dissect even further. We have sales and marketing, which we will, again, dissect even further and getting results. And then finally, in terms of actually doing the stuff, we have the action plan, the belief plan, and always remembering that doing the bare minimum in your business is enough. But just make sure you do it really, really, really well. Awesome. So yeah, let's start diving into each of these nine parts. Okay, so the reason why I created the two times two method for myself and for my clients is because I find that when you don't know what you're supposed to do in your business, or you feel like you lack clarity and direction, or maybe when you're like, constantly feeling like you have shiny object syndrome and you want to just add more and more to your to-do list or maybe when you keep looking at other people's content or their businesses because you feel like you don't really know what you need your business needs right and I feel like these things all stem from feeling like you're not doing enough and that's why you don't actually take the time to make a few key things work so that's where this two times two method comes into play so here's what it looks like when it comes to making decisions and planning for my business, I look at it from two, uh, two perspectives. Number one, what does my business need from me? And what do my ideal clients need from me, right? And then I divide that into thoughts that I need to think and actions I need to take, right? So for example, um, when it comes to what my business needs from me, I think about what are thoughts that a decision-making business owner needs to think and what are the actions that he or she needs to take and similarly, when it comes to what my ideal clients need from me, I think about what are the thoughts that a content creator or marketer needs to think, or what are the thoughts that a 
a coach needs to think? And similarly, what are the actions that he or she needs to take, right? So let me give you my interpretation of my own framework. So these are the, um, the more nuanced or specific things that I really focus in on in my business. So for example, when it comes to what the business needs for me, I, I personally find that it's really important for me to work on my identity and self-belief in my capacity and ability to be an entrepreneur and also on my commitment to the process, even if there's no evidence or external validation that things are working, right? So those are things that my business needs me to think and believe. And on the other hand, when it comes to what my ideal clients need me to think, they need me, like my ideal clients need to see me standing firm in my message, story, core values, et cetera. And they need me to believe that being myself is enough because they don't want anyone else from me they, they need me to be myself. So those are thoughts I have to work really, really hard on, right? So those, those are some examples. Uh, when it comes to the action side of things, my business needs me to sell. It needs me to make offers. Um, it also needs me to create content that builds demand for my offers. And my business also needs me to build relationships with my ideal clients or other peers and colleagues in the industry. Um, when it comes to what my ideal clients need me to do, they need me to create unique and relevant thought leadership content because they're making a lot of decisions about who to work with and they need me to really stand out and be a thought leader in my space, right? They also need me to be an example of what is possible and they, they need me to actually help them get results, right? So these are some of the examples of things I really think about in my business and I really make decisions when I look at this framework and think about, okay, should I launch this offer? Should I not do this, right? So for example, um, uh, for example, when it comes to the client results part, my, my ideal clients want me to be able to help them create results. That's why you won't see me launching a lot of like um, smaller offers. And I really focus on creating coaching offers because I need to practice my skills as a coach and really coach client after client after client to become the best coach possible for my clients. So that's why one decision that I had to make based on my framework is to stay committed to launching coaching programs because that because that's what my ideal clients need me to do, right? They need me to help them get results. And if I'm just launching an ebook here or a workshop here, it won't help me hone in my skills as a coach. So that's one example of how this framework has helped me make decisions in my business. So the main premise of the two times two method is I really want all of us to be someone that our clients actually want to work with both on and offline. So don't just tell people why they should work with you, but actually become that person that they want to work with. So that's why the answer isn't always only strategy, what we should be doing, but really I need us to manage our minds so that we can actually create a strategic action plan and implement on it wholeheartedly. So that leads into, um, oh yeah. So, um, so that's why the first action item or the first way you can apply this framework to your business is to make decisions based on what your business needs and based on what your ideal clients need, not really what our ego wants, but what do our clients and business really need from us? So that's the first part. Okay, now, now let's move on to part two, which is self-coaching and getting coached. So I'm not going to elaborate too much on this, but let me just share what I mean by these two things. So when it comes to self-coaching, I really want us to think about, and this, this is more applicable to those of you who are coaches, um, coach yourself as if you were your own client, right? Like if your client came to you with certain struggles, how would you coach them, right? So treat yourself like you were your own client, right? And be really willing to challenge every single sentence that your brain gives you and always be open to alternative ways of looking at the situation and choose to think a more helpful thought instead. And one resource I would suggest is the self-coaching model by Brooke Castillo from the Life Coach School. You can Google this or um, check out the link here, but I do really like her approach of how your thoughts create your results. And she does an excellent job of explaining her, her framework as well. So I really would recommend this resource. Um, and when it comes to getting coached, please work with a coach who understands you, your business, your lived experiences, et cetera, AKA they get you, right? So also if you're looking to develop a specific skill or create specific results, please also do your research and make sure that you look at their social proof, client results, et cetera. And finally, when it comes to getting coached and finding a coach that you might want to work with, look for someone who is an example of what's possible for you. And that's really important because there will be times when you doubt yourself and you may not have that belief in yourself that you can make this work. 
So if that's the case, we need to have a coach who has that belief in themselves and belief in you so they can hold that belief for you while simultaneously coaching you to move forward. Because the truth is all of you here are very capable of working hard and very capable of taking action. You're not lazy, right? And a lot of us here, we know how to follow instructions and take action. Most of us know how to work hard, right? But if there really was a magic blueprint to success in business, then all of us will be able to implement this action plan and very quickly become six-figure entrepreneurs. But that's not how it works, right? So that's why that mindset piece is so important. So please do yourself coaching and work with a coach who gets you and gets your business. Okay, part three, why are you doing this, right? So when I really dissected this part of the framework, it really came down to number one, are you operating from a place of service and are you operating based on your core values? What is your identity as an entrepreneur? And are you committed to this process, right? Because when it comes to being of service, especially for those of us who are coaches or service-based entrepreneurs, are you more focused on signing clients and making money in your business and creating that freedom lifestyle? Or are you more focused on helping people even for free? And bear in mind that these two things are not mutually exclusive, but your intentions will be reflected in the energy in which you operate, right? So that's something to keep in mind. When it comes to the identity piece, I really want us to think about, do you believe in what you're doing? Do you believe that you can help people with your existing skills and knowledge? Do you believe that you have ideas, opinions, lived experiences, or perspectives that can help someone? And why? Why or why not? Right? So I really want us to reflect on these questions as well. And also, when it comes to the commitment piece, are you committed to showing up and giving value for free, even if you don't sign clients for a year? three years, 10 years, right? Not saying that that's what's going to happen, but are you committed to that extent to your business, right? And why I want to emphasize this point is because your clients need to see that you're committed to helping people just like themselves, even if there's no external validation, right? Because people are watching right now. They're watching and seeing, oh, is Cheryl really committed to this? Or is she just kind of like, giving it a shot, like is she just kind of trying it out, figuring things out, or is she really committed to this, right? Because people need help and they need help from you, but they're still making their informed decisions about whether you're the right person for them. And they're really looking at whether you're committed to the process, right? So here are some examples of how I navigate unhelpful thoughts when it comes to these three categories. So one of the thoughts that I really had to navigate and coach myself on was when it comes to the service and core values part is if no one applies to my program, that means that my content isn't working, right? But how the, the way I coach myself through this particular thought is reframing it to even if no one applies after my content, I know that it's helping someone, right? Or also uh, if I can't, help people for free, why would someone want to pay me to work with them, right? So let me just focus on creating the best content possible because the main premise of building a coaching or service-based business is you're helping people. So why not help people for free, right? And that's one of my personal philosophies when building a coaching or service-based business is really operating from a place of service. That's why a lot of us here pick a service-based business model, not like dropshipping or e-commerce or something else, right? So really grounding ourselves back in service. And when it comes to the identity piece, one thought that I really had to navigate at the beginning was, what will people think of me building a business? They're going to judge me. And how I coach myself through this is really reminding myself that I believe so much in my ability to help someone, my experiences, skill sets, knowledge, they're all of value. And this is what I'm meant to do because people are going to judge me whether or not I'm building a business and that's fine. I'm sure a lot of us have been through much harder things in life than people judging your content on Instagram, right? And finally, when it comes to commitments, a thought that I had to navigate, um, and this happens throughout your entire journey, um, is, you know, I haven't signed a client in the past week. I haven't signed a client in the past month, in the past year. Maybe I should quit. And the thought that I would replace this with is, 
if I stop showing up just because no one has applied to my program for X number of months or weeks or years, then am I really here to help people or am I just building a business for self-centered reasons, right? So instead, how can I really assess what's working, what's not working and do this from a clear mind, right? So really focusing back on the intention and why you're doing this. So yeah, when it comes to applying the thoughts and mindset part of the Cheryl Theory Framework, I really want us to ground back into operating from a place of service, believing in your own skills, ideas, and staying committed to showing up no matter what. So now let's dive into the more strategy side of things. So part number four of the framework is thought leadership. And my definition of this is simply leading with your thoughts, even if no one is validating your ideas, you have to stay committed to sharing your core values, beliefs, stories, experiences, perspectives, etc. simply because you know it can help someone, simply because you believe it can help someone. And a resource I might suggest is the episode 34 of the Side Hustle Club podcast that is specifically focused on thought leadership. But let's talk a little bit more about thought leadership. So how I view this thing called thought leadership is that I really believe that this is what's going to drive your business forward because your personal brand, your marketing, sales, it can all tie back to your thought leadership. Because when we're trying to tweak our sales page copy or engage with people on Instagram DMs every day and posting about your offer and trying to over explain the value of your offer, right? Those things aren't going to work as well if you haven't yet developed your unique thought leadership. But on the other hand, if people already think of you as a thought leader in this space, then that can save you a lot of time and take out a lot of things on your to-do list. Because remember, people, clients, want to work with leaders in that particular niche. They want to work with the best of the best in the coaching space. So that's why thought leadership is really relevant. So here's what thought leadership is not. It is not taking someone else's ideas or message and trying to say it in your own words. It is not something that is completely brand new or innovative. It, it could be, but it's not a requirement, right? Because really a lot of things in this planet are not like brand new or like completely innovative and no one has ever seen it or thought of it before. So it's a lot harder to do that. Not saying it's not possible, but it's it's not the, the standard we're aiming for, right? And thought leadership is also not the most eloquent or well-written sentences or paragraphs. And said, here is how I interpreted this concept. It simply means giving people something to think about, a different perspective that they have not yet considered. And it also goes above and beyond what your colleagues uh, in your niche are doing or saying. And it also has to come from your brain, which means it's your honest thoughts and ideas and opinions or lived experiences. So if I were to make a flow chart of how to develop your thought leadership, here's what I came up with. You need to have your unique ideas, perspectives, and opinions, your own story, and lived experiences, and honesty and authenticity. And then from that, you can create your unique intellectual property and your unique content strategy. And we have those two things in place. We have your unique thought leadership. So the green things over here, the ideas, perspectives, opinions, lived experiences, stories, and honesty and authenticity, you already have that. That's already inside your brain. Now you have to translate that into unique frameworks, concepts, content. So that's like the tangible, the visible things of the things already inside your brain. And then when you keep putting those things out there into Instagram on the internet, people will start to see you as a thought leader. So that's the target goal here. So let me give you some examples from, from myself. Um, one of the uh, messages that I share a lot is that your business should not feel like a second full-time job because that's my personal opinion on this issue. And an example or a uh, experience that I navigated before that led me to develop this particular opinion is in 2019, I burned out from my business and I actually stopped operating my business for seven months. But when I came back uh, into business, 
I changed the entire way I run my business, right? So that's why I really believe now that your business should not be like a second full-time job, right? So those are my own opinions and my lived experiences. And finally, um, when it comes to the authenticity or honesty piece, I'm really showing up as myself because I believe that that is a value to my people who follow me, right? And when I took those things already inside me and inside my brain and put it into like a content concrete format that people can see, um, that led to things like the Cheryl Theory framework that led to the two times two method. Um, and that also led to my content having a very particular voice that is on brand for me. But really the main thing I was emphasized here is the green, the green column here, right? You already have these things inside your brain. It's got to dig them out and translate it into the blue things, right? The most important thing is the green thing, really understanding what are those things for yourself and then translating it into the blue things, the visible concrete things that others can see and consume. And over time, that will help you be recognized as a thought leader in your space. And that's also why I spend so much time with all of my clients on their unique thought leadership, because that is foundational to their businesses. We cannot skip this. So I think the next natural question that might come up here is, okay, so what content do I create? Like the, the blue, the middle section, right? So when people ask me this question, here are the thoughts I usually would offer to them. I want you to give yourself the time and space to be creative and have fun, like really be creative and have fun, right? Because if you feel like you have to create this particular piece of content, number one, question why do you feel like you have to create that piece of content? And number two, don't do it, right? If you my rule of thumb is if I ever feel like I have to create a particular piece of content or share on a particular trending topic in my niche, I won't do it, right? Because that leads to the, the third point here, which is don't be basic, right? But also, if you want to talk about similar topics as your colleagues in your niche, then always go above and beyond by adding that, that flavor of like thought leadership into your content, right? What are your honest thoughts about that common topic? Or what is your lived experiences for that particular topic? Or what are opinions that you personally hold and believe in, right? So that's, that's um, so your own thoughts on that particular topic, right? Um, another question I would like to leave you all with is what if there's no right way of doing content? Because we see a lot of business coaches and marketers saying that here are the best practices for content. Here is a checklist have this call to action, have a hook, whatever, whatever, right? We, we see a lot of those things, but here's the thing. A lot of us here have probably tried to implement that checklist or best practices for content, and it may not have worked or it may not have worked to the extent that we would like it to be, right? So that's why I always question, is there really a right way or best practices way to doing content, right? But yeah, also, that leads to the next point, which is like, if there was a best practices or magical checklist for content creation, then wouldn't all of us look and sound more or less the same? And I think that's what's happening a lot on Instagram, for example, because when I scroll on my feed, I see a lot of content that look very similar, even if they're not in the same niche, they look and sound very similar, right? So that's why the final question here is, what content do you want to create? And what content do you want to be known for? So let me give some examples here. For me, when I answered the last question, what do I want to be known for or what content I want to be known for? Here's what I came up with. Thought leadership and my own perspectives on building a business. I also want to be known for key messages that I really believe in. Like, you know, you should build your business in a way that does not feel like a second full-time job. I want to be known as an example of what's possible for other side hustlers, other people of similar backgrounds or stories, et cetera. I also want to be known for my client results and social proof. And I also want to be known for fun, right? So if you take a look at my Instagram feed, I would like to say that it embodies these things, right? Um, it's a little bit chaotic, not gonna lie. So it's a lot of cats, a lot of Pokemon, but nonetheless, these five things that I want to be known for, I would confidently argue that I'm able to embody these things in my content, right? So really answer that question first. What content do you want to be known for? Not what you think is working, but what do you want to be known for? So yes, when it comes to applying this to your business, I want all of us to start thinking about what is 
unique thought leadership to you and what does it look like for your business and start communicating that through your content offers, et cetera. Okay, sales and marketing, part five. So if I had to create some sort of like flow chart or process for this, it really comes down to number one, giving value and building demand through your free content, and then making an offer or adding a call to action in your content. And finally, having a sales conversation, which could look like discovery calls, um, DM conversation, whatever it looks like for you. So for the first part, what does giving value even mean? How I like to interpret this is it really just means offering a new perspective or giving people something to think about, right? And specifically, providing a new possibility or option that they did not know was possible or did not consider before. Because when you can show people that you and your, your program or offer can help them achieve that possibility, that is building demand, right? So number one, offer them things to think about. Offer them possibility, right? And then tell them, here's my offer. Here's how I can help you achieve that possibility, right? So that's how I believe demand is built, which leads into the second part here, which is adding call to actions or making offers. And here's the thing. I personally believe that there's no right time or magic formula for, for doing this, for making an offer. You can do it any time, right? Because here's the thing. A lot of people have this belief that like you have to give, give, give value first, and then you can make an offer. But what if every touch point you create is already value? And if that's the case, then you can make an offer anytime, right? Because for example, um, a lot of people think that you have to give like educational kind of value, educational tips or information first in order to be considered value. But what if value just means like, oh wait, I can build a business on part-time hours? And like my life, like what if that possibility alone was already valued to them? Or what if you being an example of what's possible is already valued to them, right? You living your best life, what if that's already valued to someone else, right? And if that's the case, you can make an offer at any time, right? So the main point I want to emphasize here is that you can make an offer at any time. Not only after you give educational tips or step-by-step -step strategy tips, whatever, you can do it any time. And finally, I personally suggest doing discovery calls or sales calls for potential clients, just because I really believe that this is a great space for you to get to know each other, answer their questions, collect market research, and answer any potential uh, objections or hesitations that they may have. And really think about it. Someone who can talk to, talk to you in real time, that can be a lot more helpful for them to make a confident and informed decision than if you were to just to DM them or try to sell them about a sales call. Because a lot of people have a lot of fears about doing sales calls, but really think about it. Someone, your potential client just wants to get to know you more and they just want to under better understand how you can help them. So I know a lot of people might have fears about this, but I would encourage you to consider doing more discovery calls or sales calls because like, how cool is that? Some stranger on the internet wants to talk to you and learn more about how you can help them. That's amazing right? Oh yeah. And also a point here is that the purpose of content is not to make you feel better about yourself. Because a lot of times I hear things like, I don't sound good enough on stories. I don't sound like I'm eloquent or, or clear enough on my, on my content, my, my post or caption. But really, it's not about how you feel about yourself. It's all it really is, is are you giving value to your audience, right? So again, let's harp a little bit more on this. What is giving value? It's not only a matter of like breadth or depth, but really rather, are you giving people something to think about? Because when I think about content that gives value, here's what I think is like the bare minimum criteria for giving value in your content. Educational tips, how-to information, bare minimum. Inspirational quote or story, bare minimum. Uh, Motivational phrases, like future you will thank you for starting today, bare minimum. Misconceptions, busting myths, limiting beliefs, bare minimum. Um, providing reflective question prompts, bare minimum. Like that is the bare minimum standard today in 2021, right? And I really want us to always go above and beyond. So if you want to do any of these things, great. But please go above and beyond by adding that flavor of thought leadership to it. 
And here's where the question might come in, which is, how do I even know if my content is working? So how do you know if your content is working? That's what I would ask, how, how would you know, right? And one way I would encourage you to think about this is think about your own behaviors when it comes to consuming other people's content. Do you always send a message to your favorite coach or entrepreneur every time you like a piece of their content, right? Do you like and comment on all of their posts every single time you like something from them? Or do you just look at it and just admire from afar? Right? Think about your own behaviors first, right? And, but, you know, I also want to add here is that here are some other indicators that might be more reflective of if your content is working. So rather than looking for like the vanity metrics, because there's a reason why it's called vanity metrics, right? Vanity metrics mean that it makes you feel better about yourself, but that's not the point of content here. So rather, here's what I might suggest to consider instead if you really want to think about is my content working? I would argue that sometimes less DMs is a pretty good sign that things are working because it means that things are clear. People are, are like understanding what you can help them with, right? Because one thing that, and I, just, I added this example here because I've noticed that some clients would say, um, like no one's asking me about my offer. Like I, but I would ask them like, do you want them to ask, like what kind of messages are you even looking from them, right? Because there's a lot of times when clients would get messages about like, okay, I know you have this offer, but like, what do you really do in your offer, right? But if your content is so clear, they don't need to message you anymore. They're still making a decision, right? So there's always another way of looking at things. Um, you might also notice that people might take less time to make decisions about you. Um, and another indicator is that you actually like your content and you don't really feel like you need to look at others anymore, right? So those might be actual indicators instead that things are working, right? So I'm just trying to offer a different perspective here, right? And also perhaps more engagement, more sales, that could mean your content is working as well. Hmm. So what about content that builds demand? Okay, here's another flow chart. So here's what I think is the process for building demand. Number one, the thought leadership content piece. Number two, social proof content, uh, which basically means content that shows that you know how to help people, how you can get people results. And finally, energy embodiment kind of content. So what I mean by this is really just, are you showcasing how, like, like what kind of energy is your content giving off? And, and are you embodying what's possible for your clients? Like, are you being an actual example of what's possible? Are you actually leading by example, right? Because you say you can help people, but are you doing it yourself, right? So that's kind of what I mean by energy and embodiment content. And then, so those are the content parts, right? And then that leads into either soft launching or traditional launches. But both of these things, all it means is making offers. And finally, that will lead to sales calls, right? So basically, yeah, as, as mentioned just now, the thought leadership content, social proof content, and energy or embodiment content, that's content that you put out. And then the ways that you can consider getting that content out to people is either soft launching or like doing like a, like a typical launch of like open card, closed card deadlines. And the goal is to get more sales calls or bookings for your program. So here's what's not going to help you build demand. thinking that you have to revamp your offer constantly and entirely, thinking that no one is buying, trying to think of more things to do, like create a website, post twice as much, et cetera, creating content because you feel like you have to show up, creating content that tries to convince people the value of working with you. For example, myth-busting content, right? So let me share what I think will actually help you build demand and set number one, Leverage your thought leadership instead of changing other parts of your business, like your to-do list, your offer, yourself, right? Because the thought leadership piece is what's going to separate you instantly from your colleagues in your niche. And I will also argue that I would rather us focus on creating clients with a warm audience in mind because that will kind of shift the energy that you create content in. So because if we're thinking about like, oh, I need to tell people why they need a coach, right? Because I see a lot of that content, like I need to like create content about why they need to work with a coach. That's more so creating content for like a colder 
audience who isn't familiar or even remotely interested in your offer, but rather when you're creating content with like a warm audience in mind, that shifts the language or energy you might show up in, right? Because you're creating content that's like much more specific and focused and even confident. Um, it, yeah, so I hope that part makes sense because I'm, for example, um, if I'm creating content about like why you should work with a coach, like it feels like I have to convince them. Like I'm trying to think really hard about like what language or sentences should I say to help them understand why they should even work with a coach. Whereas if I showed up and create content about like, hey, you know, um, here's what I can, like, I hope this is making sense. I feel like I'm not doing a good enough job articulating this. So please feel free to ask me questions in the Q&A part. But I just want to emphasize that um, for me personally, I really focus on creating content with a warm audience in mind instead of cold audience. So let me know if I have to clarify this later on. Um, and finally, leading by example, showing possibility and embodying your core values in your content. So basically show, not tell the value of your offer, right? So that kind of ties into the previous point. And also, please continue holding 100% belief in what you're seeing and continue showing up to share your ideas and thoughts, even if there's no evidence, external validation, et cetera. Really, really, really important here. Okay, so maybe another question here is how do I actually make an offer? That comes up a lot of my clients. So here's my example. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you might have seen this slide many, many, many times. So here's what I suggest. Just pick a few sentences that you like and repeat it over and over and over again. You don't need to change up the entire English language just to make an offer. Just pick a few sentences that, you, that, that sound like you and you enjoy saying, and that's all you need to do. You can put it on your Instagram stories. You can put it in your um, captions, your carousel, post slides, whatever it is, just have a few sentences or variations of them that you enjoy using. And that's all you need. That's all making an offer is, at least for myself, right? So yeah, how you can apply this part is simply make offers and tell people how you can help them very literally. Okay, results. So I need us to think about results from the perspective of client results and your own results, right? And that includes both internal results and external results. So really think about what are the intangible transformations that your clients want to create and what are the tangible ones that they want to create and how can you coach them to get those results or help, or um, if you're a service-based entrepreneur, how can you create that result for them through your services? And then for yourself, how are you practicing what you preach and teach, right? How are you creating those results for yourself? So let me give some examples here. My clients, the internal results that they're looking for usually include, they just want to feel happier and less stressed as an entrepreneur. And they want to feel like their work matters and is helping people. So that's that, that those are some areas I have to coach. I am really intentional about coaching my clients on, right? When it comes to external results, a lot of them are looking to create five to 10K months, even as a side hustler. And they also want to do this on part-time hours. So that's why I need to think about, I need myself to think about how can I coach them mindset-wise and strategy-wise to help them get there, right? And then for yourself, if that's what my clients want, I need to embody that in my own life, right? So that's why I work on my life holistically. Health, mental health, rest, relationships, leisure, career, business, right? I genuinely have to like myself and like my life because that's what my clients want. So I have to do that and really believe that for myself, right? That's why I work so hard on my mindset and stay grounded in giving value and service, right? So really practicing what you teach or preach. And also external results that my clients are looking for. That's why I implement my own strategies and frameworks, right? I have to make sure they work for myself and then for my clients, right? And I have to work on thoughts like I need to do more or um, working on my shiny object syndrome, right? Because I really believe that doing less is possible for my clients. But if I'm over here telling my clients to do less, but I'm here doing a lot of things in my own business, that's out of integrity, right? So really embodying what you're teaching or preaching in your own business. Yeah, marketing and content can only get you so far. You have to have results to back up what you're saying. And here's the thing, if you aren't working with as many clients as you would like right now, 
be your own case study, be your own living testimonial. Because really, how often do we gloss over people's testimonials and screenshots on their sales page? And how often are we only looking at the coach themselves, right? So really, even if you don't have as many clients as you would like right now, that's not an excuse. Work on yourself first, right? Um, yeah, here is a recent example of um, content that I shared that really showcase what is possible for my clients and also how I'm doing that for myself, right? So here, um, this is actually from last week on my Instagram story. So basically the, the gist of this is that I um, talked about how a client recently said that they want to work with me because I'm very calm and grounded as an entrepreneur, which is very different from the vibes of other coaches in the, in the space. And I, I share that it's because I really work on my life holistically. And here's why it's important to me. Um, here are things I do. Um, here are my beliefs on it. And yeah, so that's like an example here. So um, maybe on the replay, if you want to pause this recording here and take a look at the screenshots, feel free to do so. But yes, um, so when it comes to applying this part of the framework, coach your clients and coach yourself. Create the same results for your clients and for yourself as well. All right, now we're entering part number seven, implementing on your action plan. So I really want us to just create the bare minimum action plan. What is the least number of things you can do in your business? So I find that this is usually enough for most of my clients. So here's what they are. Creating content for one social media platform and more specifically, create thought leadership content and make offers and talk about your program. Make friends on the platform, work of clients, aka coaching calls or services, whatever you, you do in your business. And finally, do your self-coaching and get coached. But I would even add that, mm, I, I, I just had a client message me last night saying that they signed, um, they basically made back their investment last night, but they don't even post on social media. So I would even argue that you can go even more bare minimum than this, right? There's always another way of doing things. So here's what I would suggest, but I do have clients who do even less than these things on this list. So always be aware of what's possible, but whatever you choose to do on your to-do list, action plan list, do it really, really well, right? Oh, let me share my example here. And here's why I believe doing the bare minimum is enough. So March to August, 2019, here's all the things I did. It's a lot of things. Instagram stories, Instagram posts, Facebook lives, Facebook group, YouTube, podcasts, making friends, LinkedIn, email newsletter, lead magnets, and working on clients. It's no surprise I burns out by August 2019. That's only five months after I started my business, right? I burns out and I stopped until March next year, 2020. And when I, when I came back on the coaching space, I cut down my to-do list by a lot, right? So all I did for the next six or seven months in 2020 was Instagram, making friends and working with clients and things are fine. But then by October, 2020, I started feeling like, you know what? I have a lot more to share. I have a lot more to say. I'm a lot more recharged. Let me add on the podcast. Um, and also I started doing self-coaching and getting coached, right? So actually since October, well, actually more, more like December, 2020, my business has skyrocketed. And as of record, or not recording this, but as of today, right now, we are very close to hitting 100K in 12 months alone, right? So since December last year, we're very close to making six figures in 12 months alone. But that's because I really had to cut down and scale back on my to-do list and focus on doing each thing really, really, really well. Because I've done it both ways. I've hustled and I've grinded. Didn't work. I did the bare minimum and work on and added that mindset piece. It worked a lot better for me. So just keep in mind that both can work. You can hustle your way to six figures. It can work, but there's also another way of doing things, right? So that's really the main point here. So yeah, um, please create the shortest list of action items as possible. And part number eight, your belief plan. So what I believe, okay, so what an action plan is, is a list of things that you want to do. And a belief plan is a list of thoughts that you want to think or believe. And here are some of my examples of thoughts that I really um, refer back to on a very regular basis every week, right? So I'm already a thought leader. My brain creates amazing value for my idol clients. I have a lot of amazing things to say. 
me being myself is of value to others. I don't need to be anyone else. I'm committed to sharing my ideas and message, even if no one applies to my program. I'm committed to helping people for free. The clients will come. My clients might not even be watching my Instagram stories every single day. They might not even be following me right now. They can come from anywhere. Rest and well-being is the backbone of my business success. Rest is productive and necessary for business. So these are thoughts that I really intentionally choose to look back on and think about very, very, very often. So yeah, when it comes to applying this to your business, choose to think helpful and intentional thoughts even when your brain wants to resist. And finally, doing the bare minimum really, really well goes back to the Cheryl Theory framework. So yeah, this is an overview of the Cheryl Theory framework. Okay, let me just pause here. So before we dive into the Q&A and live coaching part of this call, I want to just extend a quick invitation to any of you who resonated with the Cheryl Theory approach and want to take it a step further. So give me a few minutes to do this. So here's the thing. If you want to start or scale your coaching business or service-based business to five to 10K months and still excel in your career and make time for what matters most to you in life, I know I can help you. And what I really focus in on when, I, when it comes to helping my clients is we will focus on building your coaching business or service-based business on part-time hours and signing clients consistently, even as a side hustler. And we really focus on stepping into the role of a thought leader in your niche, creating content that builds demand for your programs and making money being your authentic self. And also, I really want us to actually like ourselves, our business and our lives, right? And continue growing your business so that you can ultimately create more options in life and career, and also build a life, career, and business that is aligned with who you are and what you really want in for yourself, right? So the goal of my programs is really based on the following, thoughts and mindset, strategy and structure, and doing the work. And my goal, once again, is to help you, especially those of you who are really busy and had a lot of things going on, to run a simple business that works so that you can actually make your business, enjoy your life, and genuinely be happy as a person. So yeah, um, here's a slide of the Cheryl Theory Framework. And yes, so here's the invitation. If any of this resonates with you, and if you've ever resonated with our content, our message, or our, or our approach, please do consider joining us inside either the one to one program or the group program. Um, and for everything that you need to know about both of these programs or to send in an application, please go to CherylTheory.com slash program. Yeah, here's the comparison table of the two programs. Um, if I have to be honest, I think that the main difference is whether you want to talk to me for six months only, or you want to be in a group of other amazing people for six months. So that's really the main difference between the two programs. But again, all the information can be found on the uh, CherylTheory.com slash program website. Um, and some recent client wins. So Kelly created her first 6K month on top of being a parent and her other professional career responsibilities, Betty signed her first four high ticket clients in the first nine weeks of the group program. On top of her pretty busy career, Brittany created 8K inside her business during our four months of the group program while working a full-time job. And Crystal made back double her investment of her one-to-one -one program in just four months on top of working. So those are some pretty, pretty cool stuff going on inside our programs. Um, and yeah, uh, for those of you who might be curious about what else clients have created, please go to CherylTheory.com slash client dash wins. And finally, I just want to finish this off by saying why I do this, because I have seen firsthand how my business has changed my life, my, my own life and the lives of my clients. So that's why I now really believe in helping others do the same so that they can, number one, create more options in life and number two, create a life, career, and business that is aligned with who they really are and what they really want. Because I believe that that's possible for all of us. And I really believe that we have the choice to create this life, career, and our business that is aligned with who we are and what we really want without the need to impress other people 
or to seek external validation. And that's a whole nother tangent that we can go on another time. But really, I, I just want to add here that if you have a vision of the impact that you want to make in this world and the life that you want to make in this world, and also you have an idea of what kind of lifestyle you want for yourself and those around you, then I really want to challenge you to start showing up and creating that business and life that you really want. So again, here's a Pikachu to invite you to join us inside the One to One program or the group program. Once again, CherylDeary.com slash program. So that wraps up the training part of our presentation or workshop slash Zoom party. Now we're going to segue into the live coaching, q &A party part of this webinar then 